Hey team, chemistry coach coming back at you. Very similar to the last video, we looked at reducing strength and oxidizing strength, which is mostly review. We just looked at it in a little more depth with what we got on atomic properties. Now, we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to look at acidic and basic oxides, right? Because a lot of metals exist as oxides out in nature because they're pretty reactive. Now, in the last video, we saw that uh, metals, alkaline metals and alkaline earth metals, reacted with water to form basic solutions. Hey, there we go. So it is, it, is it any big surprise that the metal oxide would also form a basic solution? Hopefully not too much of a surprise there. And if non-metals are opposites of metals, if metal oxides form basic solutions, maybe non-metal oxides form acid solutions? I mean, I'm just throwing some things out here at you. Let's take a look at it. It really turns out the chemistry of an oxide right, which means you've got some element bound to oxygen. That's the oxide, right? The nature of the element that's bound to the oxygen really determines its reactive behavior, especially if you put it in water or something like that, right? If I put it in water, do you get an acid or base or neither, right? The, it turns out the more metallic the non-oxygen element is, the more basic the oxide compound is. We call them basic oxides. Some people call them base anhydrides because you haven't put them in water yet, but when you put them in water, you get a basic solution. For example, let's take potassium oxide. Now, we all agree potassium is a metal, right? Especially these are the most, alkali metals are the most reactive, so these would be even more reactive. So any of these babies right here, if you form an oxide with those, you put them in water, they're going to form a basic solution. Right? So potassium oxide plus water gives you the potassium ions and hydroxidides. If you wrote that as a molecular equation, you just write 2KOH aqueous, understanding it's soluble if you want to do the net ionic equation. Now, this is, an acid, this is not a redox. We're not changing oxidation numbers. This is an acid-base reaction. Okay? Potassium's plus one here. It's still plus one over there. Oxygen's a minus two oxidation state. still a minus two. Hydrogen's a plus one, still a plus one. You haven't changed oxidation numbers, so this is not a redox reaction. The pure metals are redox. They're that reactive. The oxides are acid-base, so these are called basic oxides, or it's the base. It's without the water yet, so this is the base anhydride or basic anhydride. So because potassium is very, very metallic, we'd expect that to be pretty strongly basic in water. We predict it that way. Well, if you remember from the periodic table, you got the metals here and non-metals here. So we get less metallic going this way, more metallic going this way. So I would expect down here these to be stronger bases as far as the oxide. So rubidium oxide would be stronger than potassium. And I would expect you to get less basic this way. And we're going to find out these become acidic. And then you get the ones in the middle that are like, am I basic or acidic? I'm not really sure. But would you agree as we go down the table, that would become more reactive, stronger base? All right, let's look at some non-metal oxides. All right, looking the same way we did with uh, metals, metal oxides being basic, we should predict that non-metal oxides would be the opposite or acidic, right? So the more non-metallic the element bound to oxygen is, the more acidic the oxide is. We call them acidic oxides or acid anhydride. You might run into that in OCHEM quite a bit. So let's take, for example, sulfur dioxide, right? So we know sulfur is way over here, right? We know these are all non-metals. And the more non-metallic, right, I would expect, you know, chlorine, a chlorine oxide compound to be more acidic than a sulfur oxide compound. Take out the noble gases, right? But the further over, the more non-metallic you get, the more acidic oxide we would predict. Put that in water. Now, for the metal oxides, we could predict. You're just going to form the basic solution. We get an acidic solution, but I find predicting it is challenging. So in my class, I don't expect you to predict what acid forms. I will have to, you can either tell me it will form an acidic solution, or I will have to give you the product myself because it's it can be challenging. So here it's just a combination reaction. You get H2SO3, right? Sulfurous acid, right? You'd think you would get sulfuric, no, you get sulfurous. And you can get some really weird ones, especially with the different nitrogen oxides, NO and NO2 and I mean N2O, you get all these different nitrogen oxides. How do you, you know, what if you have, you know, P4O10? 
tetraphosphorus decoxide. What do you get? Do you get phosphoric acid or phosphorus acid? Uh, that's a little beyond our pay grade at this point. Just know you get an acid solution, and you can see it right there. Right? So because that's a, sulfur is a nonmetal and it forms an acidic solution, sulfur dioxide is an acidic oxide. So we have to watch out for those because a lot of these are byproducts of pollution. And if they get in the water systems, they can acidify the water systems. pH starts to drop. Little fishies have issues. Yeah, you can see where we're coming from. Um, I'm not an aquatic life type of guy, um, but I guess I would understand that probably would be slightly damaging. So let's look at some trends as we go all the way across. Because there's a point where you go from metal oxides to non-metal oxides going from basic oxides to acidic oxides. What about the ones in the middle? There's, there's a tipping point where you go from a basic oxide to an acidic oxide. What happens at that tipping point? Am I a, am I a basic oxide? Am I an acidic oxide? I don't know. I am right. I look to my right and there's a basic oxide and I look to my left, there's an acidic oxide. What do I do? Am I both? Am I one or the other? Well, let's talk about that. All right, so what I did is I took the uh, N equals 3 row. I'm not looking at the transition metals. So we're going from metals over here to non-metals over here, right? There's got to be an inflection point, or a great book, by the way, Tipping Point, where it flips from a basic oxide to an acidic oxide. Well, let's take a look at sodium to argon, going all the way across, right? So from sodium all the way over to argon. Obviously, the atomic size is decreasing, right? Not worried about that here. More metallic over here. We know these are metals, alkaline metals, alkaline earth metals, and they're less metallic over to this side, right? We know, obviously, chlorine, sulfine, phosphorus are non-metals. Aluminum's typically, it's a metal. It's treated as a metal. And then you get the metalloids, right? The silicon's right on there, so it's one of those metalloids or semi-metals. Of course, argon, we're just going to ignore the noble gases. They got a full valence shell. They don't want to react with anything anyway, so these are non-reactive. They don't get to play. But obviously, going from metallic to acidic between sodium and chlorine. Well, the more metallic, right, the element of the ox, that's not the oxygen, the stronger the basic oxide. So sodium would be a stronger basic oxide, so sodium oxide, than magnesium oxide. Then aluminum oxide, and moving across all the way to, to one of the chlorine oxides would be way more acidic, more acidic going this way. So somewhere in the middle here, it flips from basic to acidic. And that's what we call amphoteric. It's like, ah, I'm stuck in the middle. I'm in between you guys. You're basic, you're acidic. Silicon's, yeah, acidic, right? But not intuitively obvious. But aluminum, you would think would be a basic oxide because it's a metal. But it's a metal that's way over here, <laughs> right? Your move, it's less metallic. Than these babies, right? It's less reactive, right? What are our aluminum? What are our soda pop cans made out of? Aluminum with a really nasty plastic layer in there. I read a book uh, on rust. It was just called Rust, and they talked about aluminum cans. Use uh, you know the cans they used to use back in the old days as rusting. So they actually created this this thin plastic layer on the inside to prevent the the acidic soda from corroding through. The more I I have not, that I'm aware of, had liquid from a can since. Only bottles. <laughs> the, sometimes you don't want to know. It's kind of like when I worked my way through college. I worked at uh, National Semiconductor. Uh, they, they make little, you know, silicon wafer chips and things like that. But I was an analyst for the water systems because bacteria is like King Kong on one of those uh, semiconductor chips. So I would go around in my little bunny suit um, you know, collecting water samples and analyzing for bacterial contamination. And a lot of people at lunch break, hey, could you check the water faucet? I'm like, no, I don't want to know what that looks like on a microscopic level because I drink out of that. If I looked in there, I wouldn't drink again. Kind of like if you, you know, swab your uh, significant other's mouth, you know, and take a look at all the bacteria. You're like, you might go, I don't know if I want to kiss anybody anymore, <laughs> right? So I just don't want to know, right? Ignorance is bliss sometimes in science. <laughs> so not that you needed to know that, but something to think about for the rest of the day. You know, hopefully you're not going out on a dating <laughs> today. I'm so sorry. All right, anyway. So obviously um, we wouldn't make a can out of, we know sodium reacts explosively with water. Would you want to put an aqueous base liquid like soda pop, or some kind of juice in there? 
the can would explode, <laughs> right? Magnesium, right? Not as reactive, but it wouldn't be good. So aluminum is much less reactive, okay? So it makes a lot more sense to make a can out of aluminum than sodium or potassium. See what I'm saying? And if you're a fireman, be careful if there's a fire at a chemical plant. You don't want to be spraying your water hoses if there's like sodium in there. <laughs> you go, boom! Right? It's good to know some chemistry. All right, so stuck in the middle, amphoteric, which means, well... You're a base over here, and you're an acid over there, so I'm both. Amphoteric, right? If you're aluminum oxide, you're like, well, sometimes I like to be a basic oxide. Sometimes I like to be an acidic oxide. I have no preference one way or the other. It just depends who I'm playing with. So if you, put, if you let me play with an acid, I'll act as a base. If you let me play with a base, I'll be an acid. So it morphs. Right? It morphs, amphoteric morphs to a behavior based on who is around it, or in this case, what's around it. So it can react as both an, a basic oxide and an acidic oxide, depending on what it's reacting with. Let me show you a couple quick reactions, real quick, and we'll be done. Easy video today. Let's take a look at this amphoteric, I'm, I'm an acidic oxide and a basic oxide thing. So aluminum oxide. All right. Let's do it as a basic oxide, as an acidic oxide. Just some example reactions. So if it's acting as a basic oxide, well, and we're going to do a lab with that next semester. Right? Um, I think we do magnesium oxide as a base, reacted with like hydrochloric acid or something like that. But let's say we reacted with some hydrobromic acid. Right? So there's my acid. This is acting as my base in this scenario. And they neutralize each other, spitting out water, and you get aluminum bromide, which is definitely acting as a base, right? Basic oxide. Well, as an acidic oxide, let's react it as an acid and get rid of the base, right? A little more complicated here. You kind of need a little higher concentration of the sodium hydroxide, and you get this weird-looking compound. You see those brackets in there? Don't die over it. I'm not going to ask you to predict the products. You know, uh, for this class, we're not going to have to predict these products. Just know it can react as both an acid and a base. But you get something called a complex ion because it looks complex. We're going to study those uh, next semester quite heavily. We're going to do quite a, a lab or two using them. That's kind of a branch of chemistry a lot of introductory chemists have never seen before. <laughs> so again, Proving that aluminum oxide is amphoteric. So as you're moving across the periodic table in any row, you can see it goes from a basic oxide, right, to somewhere in the middle here, uh, uh, amphoteric. Don't worry, we don't worry too much about the transition metals for this class. Let's just think about main group elements. So right along, especially along these metalloids, you get these amphoteric species and then the acidic oxides. Eh, pretty straightforward stuff. Moving on, we're going to be doing some uh, bonding and Lewis structures next. Woo, super important.